The HIPAA privacy and security rules dictate that all who may come in contact with protected health information go through a training on HIPAA policy and that there be documentation to prove that the training has been completed. This program will train you in the basic HIPAA rules regarding the use, transmission, security, and privacy of healthcare data. In August of 1996, Congress enacted the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA. The primary purposes of HIPAA are to protect people from losing their health insurance if they change jobs or have pre-existing health conditions, to reduce the cost and administrative burdens of health care by creating standard electronic formats for many administrative transactions that are currently carried out on paper, and to develop standards and requirements to protect the privacy and security of personal health information. It is these privacy and security standards that this program will discuss in more detail. Upon passage of the HIPAA Act, the Department of Health and Human Services was required to issue two separate regulations referred to as the Privacy Rule and the Security Rule. These regulations require healthcare organizations to adopt processes and procedures to ensure the highest degree of patient confidentiality. These processes include administrative, physical, and technical safeguards to ensure that medical information is stored, transmitted, and received in a safe and secure manner. HIPAA regulations cover a broad scope and impact virtually every department of every entity that has access to personal health information. Hospitals, medical practices, insurance companies, and other health care organizations are undergoing significant changes in the way they handle patient information. When covered entities use or transmit protected health information in any form, they must comply not only with the privacy and security rules, but also with any state laws regarding privacy of medical records. In the event of a conflict between HIPAA and state law, HIPAA preempts state law unless the state law is stricter. In other words, whichever provides greater protection to patients must be followed. Entities covered by the privacy and security rule include healthcare plans, healthcare providers, healthcare clearinghouses, and business associates of covered entities, which include auditors, consultants, lawyers, data and billing firms, and others with whom the covered entities have agreements involving the use of protected health information. The privacy and security rules protect individually identifiable health information transmitted or maintained by a covered entity, no matter what form it takes. That means that when a doctor takes notes in a medical chart, when a hospital data entry clerk types health insurance information into a computer, or when health care providers discuss a patient's condition, any identifiable health information becomes protected health information under HIPAA. A covered entity may not use or disclose protected health information except as the individual authorizes in writing or as the HIPAA privacy rule permits or requires. The HIPAA privacy rule allows the use and disclosure of protected health information without an individual's authorization for the following purposes or situations. To the individual or their authorized representative. For treatment, payment, or health care operations when the individual has the opportunity to agree or object, such as when the patient brings another person into the exam room for their office visit, incidental to an otherwise permitted use, and for the purpose of research or public health. Covered entities should also rely on professional ethics and best judgments in deciding which of these permissive uses and disclosures to make. The privacy rule requires a covered entity to provide patients with a Notice of Privacy Practices, or NPP, and make a good faith effort to obtain a patient's written acknowledgement of receiving the NPP. The Notice of Privacy Practices must inform patients of the uses and disclosures of PHI that the entity may make, the patient's right to access and amend their medical information, and the covered entity's responsibilities with respect to PHI. Once it has obtained the acknowledgement or has made a good faith effort to do so, the entity may use PHI for its own treatment, payment, or healthcare operations and disclose PHI to other covered entities for their treatment, payment, or certain limited healthcare operations. 
when using or disclosing PHI or when requesting PHI from another covered entity. A covered entity must make reasonable efforts to limit PHI to the minimum necessary to accomplish the intended purpose of the use or disclosure. Except in certain circumstances, individuals have the right to review and obtain a copy of their protected health information. Covered entities may impose reasonable cost-based fees for the cost of copying and postage for information requests. Also, personal representatives, parents of minors, and others may be legally authorized to make health care decisions on behalf of patients. These individuals should be treated with the same information access as the individual. As a general rule, a covered entity may not use or disclose protected health information for purpose other than treatment, payment, and health care operations without the patient's written authorization. For example, the privacy rule prohibits a covered entity from disclosing PHI to others for marketing purposes without the patient's written authorization. At the same time, communications regarding treatment, case management, or the recommending of alternative therapies is excluded from the definition of marketing, as are communications that promote health in a general manner. Thus, for example, a health-related newsletter that a covered entity distributes to patients to inform them about new health care developments would not be considered marketing under the privacy rule. The privacy rule also allows incidental disclosures of PHI as long as the covered entity uses reasonable safeguards and adheres to minimum necessary standards. For example, doctor's offices may use waiting room sign-in sheets. Hospitals may keep charts at bedsides. Doctors may talk to patients in semi-private rooms and medical staff may confer at the nurse's station without violating the privacy rule as long as reasonable safeguards are followed. Since many employees receive, store, and transmit PHI as part of their day-to-day -day responsibilities, the privacy rule requires the following administrative safeguards to ensure that PHI is not compromised. A privacy officer. Designating a privacy officer to be responsible for the development and implementation of privacy policies and the receiving of complaints. Training. The training of all workforce members on privacy policies and procedures as necessary and appropriate for them to carry out their job functions. Business associates. Requiring business associates such as lawyers, consultants, auditors, billing companies, and pharmacists to confirm that they will protect PHI. Tracking. Developing a system to track who accessed what information and violations. Implementing rules for addressing violations of privacy, security, and transaction regulations, including establishing a process for making complaints and preventing retaliation against anyone who reports a HIPAA violation. The security rule portion of HIPAA also requires that administrative, physical, and technical safeguards be in place to prevent the improper use or disclosure of PHI. These safeguards primarily deal with the security and transmission of data that contains PHI. These requirements include a security officer, designating a security officer to be responsible for the development, implementation, and evaluations of security policies. This may be the same person as the privacy officer. Risk analysis a technical evaluation and implementation of procedures to ensure that computers are secure from intrusion. Risk management. Implement security measures sufficient to reduce risks and vulnerabilities to a reasonable and appropriate level to comply with HIPAA requirements. A sanction policy. Applying appropriate sanctions against employees who fail to comply with HIPAA policies and procedures. Information system activity review. Implement procedures to regularly review records of information system activity, such as audit logs, access reports, and security incident tracking reports. Employee security. Develop a plan for granting and limiting different levels of access to PHI, including clearance procedures and termination procedures. This includes security checks and special training for all employees with access to sensitive information. It's important that all employees understand how to keep PHI secure and report any incidents regarding PHI. Employees should also understand the importance of password security, computer virus protection, and the dangers of malicious software. 
Your trainer should review the internal policies regarding each of these important security issues. Business Associate Agreements Agreements with external recipients of PHI confirming that they will protect the confidentiality of data exchanged. A Contingency Plan a plan for responding to system emergencies including the performance of backups, emergency mode operations, and disaster recovery procedures. And security incident procedures. Instructions for reporting and dealing with security breaches. And physical safeguards. The security rule also requires a number of physical steps to ensure that PHI contained in computers is properly protected from environmental hazards as well as from unauthorized intrusion. Physical safeguards include the following. Facility access controls. Develop a facility security plan that deters intruders from accessing environments where sensitive information resides. Guidelines on workstation use and security. Procedures describing the proper functions to be performed on computers and how to handle sensitive information that may be displayed on computer screens and media controls. A set of procedures that govern the receipt and removal of hardware and software such as disks, memory sticks, laptops, and PDAs, as well as procedures for off-site data backup. Finally, the security rule requires certain technical safeguards for PHI, including access controls. Controls to ensure that access to sensitive information is available on a need-to-know basis, based on user responsibilities. Audit controls, controls to record and examine system activity, helping eliminate unnecessary access to sensitive information. Data authentication, controls to help ensure that health data has not been altered in an unauthorized manner. Person or entity authentication, controls to ensure that data is sent to the intended recipient and received by the intended party. These controls include the use of password protections, PIN numbers, and when sent over public networks, encryption, and transmission security. Sending PHI via email and fax, according to the security rule, it is permissible to use the internet to transmit PHI as long as an acceptable method of encryption is used to protect the confidentiality and Appropriate authentication procedures are followed to ensure correct identification of the sender and receiver. Although faxes are transmitted over telephone lines, they are not considered to be covered transactions by the security rule. However, they may be sent as authorized by your company's privacy policy. The HIPAA regulations are now completely in effect and failure to comply with the HIPAA privacy and security rules can lead to significant financial and other penalties. Civil and criminal penalties to both individuals and companies may be enforced and include fines of up to $1.5 million per year and 10 years of imprisonment. It is important that all who may come in contact with PHI understand and carry out their responsibilities under these rules as outlined in this training program.